do, among others, we're going to do a uh, service, basic service, on a Toyota Taz. Okay, uh, some of you might remember that. Um, you know, it's an old rear-wheel drive uh, vehicle uh, with a 2E engine. And, um, okay, let me show you the car. There we are, that's Toyota Taz. It's a far, basically a five-door hatch. Very popular car in its day, okay. Uh, the Toyota Yaris has actually taken over from this vehicle, okay. And this vehicle, they were very popular. Maintained their, um, their resale values pretty good, you know. And uh, let me just show you inside, very basic, okay. Um, we basically have a uh, um, Speedo, you know, with your... Um, uh, with an analog counter for mileage and then you have a temperature gauge you have a, a oil um, a fuel gauge indicators on the right wipers on the left basic layout dashboard no air con here just basic stock you know like a blower and no airbags uh, you know there's facility to fit a radio over there five speed manual they came in four speed as well levered handbrake Okay, so no electric windows, still old wind-up windows over there, no uh, airbags, these were the days before the airbags, but a very nice car, I mean I owned one, we owned one, my family owned one, my wife and I, we bought it brand, brand, brand new, and then we had it for three years, and my wife is very light on vehicles, she only drove about 15,000 k's in about three years, and then when we uh, wanted to trade it in, they actually gave us 5,000 Rand more than what we originally paid for it. So, you know, uh, pretty, pretty nice. Let's go look at the engine. It is a basic uh, a 2E, what we call a 2E engine. Okay, so it's still got the old uh, spark plug wires, you know, with a, a, with a distributor cap. But this one is very unusual that it actually has the coil under the cap built in. Okay, that coil. It's a centralized coil because it handles all, all four of the cylinders. All right. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just do the basic oil change and filters change. But I just want to give you guys a bit of a tip, you know, before you work on a car, especially when a car is ice cold and it's stood over, whether it be your car, whether it be a car of a friend or acquaintance which you are going to service and you want to do them a favor. There are a few checks that you one normally does before you start an engine up because remember it might not be your car so you know you don't know if it's been maintained. The first thing that I would do before you start a car up and this is what I do you know when I do services as well. With the, this car is ice cold now so I will make sure that there is enough water in the radiator that the radiator is full. Okay if you can you know check the, 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 the overflow bottle as well okay and check if there's enough oil in the motor because i have already heard of incidences where people while they were flushing the motor or running the engine home to service it uh, they ran a bearing or something because there wasn't enough oil in the car okay so if you basically look at that that oil is pretty dirty okay you'll see the difference when we finish because you know i like to flush the engines and then also just look at the fan belts down here make sure they are on okay and they're not broken or so or in a bad state just so make sure that the car you know there's no major oil leaks you take a look at the bottom there's no oil dripping on the floor and all that kind of thing it, it's just the, the three basic checks is going to take you less than a minute okay so let's go ahead i'm going to warm this car up so i'm going to start it up for the first time now the car overnighted here okay uh, because it's more convenient for customers sometimes to bring their cars in in the evening um, you know, because uh, then it's uh, then it's easier for me for the next day. So we've got this little emo button immobilizer. Some of you might know or remember that. With these cars, it's a carburetor and with automatic choke. So you give it one or two pumps on the accelerator pedal to activate the automatic choke. Turn the key. Um, uh, easier said than done. I think it hasn't uh, deactivated on the immobilizer. Just make sure. I think the light's got to stay off. There we go. So that's it. Now we'll just let it idle. Can, can you hear how high um, the idling is? And if I look through the rear view mirror there, I see a little bit of smoke. So that tells me that the valve stem seals of this car might be worn out. Okay. Um, and you know, she, she'll idle on a higher rev. Unfortunately, there's no rev count in the car, so I can't say how high. 
I can I can actually relieve the choke here a little bit if I just temper with it, you know, give it like a a little bit of a rev and then you can hear it, it comes down. It's still not at its normal idling, this is a cold idling now. It's gotta be higher because a car demands a richer mixture when the car is cold. Okay. So I'm gonna let her idle for about five minutes and then I'm going to add the flash. So while we are waiting for the car to warm up, I thought I'll just uh, sort of unpack the parts that I'm going to be using here, which just got delivered to me. Okay, um, so we have an air filter, we have a uh, petrol filter, we have some flush, we're using again shield because uh, I don't know, my suppliers are once again out of spun yet. Um, and then of course the full spark plug. Okay, so basically we're going to be doing um, a petrol filter and this is uh, not a complicated filter, it's just a normal uh, plastic or petrol filter because it still has a mechanical pump there's no high pressure electric pump eh? four spark plugs which is still have the 21 size 21 heads you know to take, uh, take out and whatever and then of course we have an oil, uh, oil filter and the oil I'm using here is the 20W50 okay which is basically a multi-grade motor oil at shell units because this car spec is not very high okay it's still mechanical tappets and things like that so we don't need to go with the HX5 or HX7, it's an overkill. As long as you do your oil changes on time, this one gets done every 15,000 kilometers, you should be okay with that oil. It's a recommended oil for this car anyway. All right, so those are the parts that we're going to be fitting. It's a really simple, basic car. Okay, there's nothing complicated about it, but I'll take you through the whole procedure. So we are just going to wait until the car warms up uh, sufficiently. And then um, I think it's been idling for long enough. Let's just see what happens when I Okay, there she goes completely off the choke, which means she is now nice and warm. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch off, put in the flush, and then get her to idle for 15 minutes. So it basically has a screw-on cap over there. Okay, I'm going to screw that cap off, put it on, a, on the workbench, and then I'll take the flush, the 350 mil. I'll pour in the contents of this whole uh, bottle. Okay, try not to mess. Okay, I'll tell you what. Use a funnel, much easier, and you're not gonna miss. Okay, I've never been a, a good pourer. <laughs> okay, so use a funnel, less less acids. So I've got to wipe away my spools and my mess now. Okay, and then I'll put the cap back, screw it on, nice and tight. Okay. And then I can go ahead and start the car. I'll just get my 15 minute timer set and uh, get it to go. Right, so I'll get back to you once that 15 minutes are up. So normally what I, what I normally do while I wait for the flush to do its job, I have 15 minutes, I basically go through my 50 point inspection, like you know, I would check uh, you know any play on the front wheels, play on the rear wheels, uh, check ball joints, tie rod ends, check uh, CV joint rubber boots, uh, check the undercarriage, the exhaust, the exhaust hangers, um, I check if the lights work and not like we had a problem here with the brake light at the back which I replaced okay uh, the one brake light wasn't working the indicators wasn't working either so we found a short in the circuit okay that was that got sorted out and um, you know I just make sure that all the lights work that the wipers work um, you know that's your basic safety checks you check your tires you make sure that the tire thread are quite good if you see any unusual wear knobby knobby effect wear on the tires it normally points to worn shock absorbers, you know, reciprocating too fast, not keeping the the, 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 the the tire constantly on the road. So, yeah, you know, you do your normal uh, basic safety checks, you know, I call it a 50 point inspection because if I list all the components which I check and test, it comes to much more than 50, but I just rounded off as 50. Okay, so 
you know you also check for you know you check your body you check the body you check like this one's got a little bit of rust over here and that. Um, you know uh, check the body for any uh, 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 signs that uh, you know I think the vehicle could be unsafe to be on the road like maybe a bumper loose and dragging on the road and so on you know you will check all that and it doesn't take very long the 15 minutes is way more um, time than what you need to do uh, what I call my 50 point inspection you know so uh, what you should basically do is visit my website vehicle maintenance and repairs.com um, I have a lot of info on the website as well I've just recovered my website I lost it for about two years I thought it was gone but it, I, I found it I got it back there's lots of useful information over there and if you want to communicate with me in any way that's another forum that you can use you know so let's wait until this uh, timer says uh, zero and then we can go ahead and show you how to drain this oil. Okay, so let's get that uh, dismissed. Let's get the pass installed. Okay, and let's get to the bottom to drain the oil. Before we go down there, I'd suggest that you loosen up the cap. Open up the cap, put the cap on the safe place. Okay, with a size 14 spanner, we loosen up the sump plug. Okay, until it's loose enough for us just to get it out by hand like that. We'll get the oil to drain into our receptacle. Okay, you notice how that washer stays behind. Okay, don't forget to take it off when you put in a new washer because you don't want a double washer there. Okay. And then of course, uh, you know, in the meantime, we'll source our, um, our oil filter. Our oil filter is situated right at the top, right in the front. You can take it off from the bottom or you can take it off from the top. Okay, so while we are down here at the bottom, I think I'll just, well, I'll do it from the top. Uh, it's easier to form. So we'll just wait until that oil uh, becomes a trickle, which is about to happen now. And then we'll go ahead and get that oil filter off. Just get that receptacle so that it can catch the oil when we empty, when we uh, loosen up that oil filter. So quite simply, we'll use the chain, which is basically the easiest method. We'll just get the chain to loosen the oil filter until we can take it off by hand and there you see the filter okay. and quite simply just turn it off by hand okay quite easily all right we'll take it and we'll drop it into our little oil receptacle there without missing too much we make 100 percent sure that we actually got that that we got that um that oil seal off Okay, just wipe our spools there. You see, nice. These are plain, nice and clean. Okay, nothing stuck to it. So that's as simple as it is to take the, the oil filter off. Okay. So let's get the let's get the air filter replaced uh, using a size 12 socket. We'll just uh, loosen up this clamp so we can just get that back a little bit we've got a wing nut over there okay that holds that that top on we'll just get that wing nut and that washer out of the way put it on a safe place okay three clips one two three we'll just unclip that there's one or two wires that we just uh, pipes that we just have to undo okay so we can take the top part of this air filter off okay they do stick sometimes all right because uh, especially if it hasn't been replaced for a while just pay attention to this uh, little concertina pipe here it's a heat transfer pipe okay which basically gets on uh, put onto a plate and then onto the air filter it's to warm the air up because the exhaust is the first thing to get to to heat up okay so if you want to get warm air in you know heat up that section there quite clever 
So that's the air filter, just basically pulls off. Okay, right, we'll discard that. Here we go, a brand new, nice, clean filter. So we'll just put the filter in place, but we won't put that top on because uh, it hinders us uh, getting to the spark plugs. Okay, so we just need to take the spark plug wires off. Sometimes I just use a little pliers or something, you know, to get a better grip because these wires they tend to uh, they tend to break off inside. So just be very careful. If they come off nice and easy, fine. Try and memorize which one comes off where, so that you don't muddle up your <laughs> um, your firing order. Okay. So what I normally just do, I normally just use a little extension um, on a uh, basically on a speed wrench with a swirl. That kind of setup. Okay. And uh, it should just be quite simple. The spark plugs aren't in too tight. You know, then they basically turn out pretty quickly and pretty easily. Okay, that's one out. Doesn't look too bad. Doesn't look to be burning too bad. Doesn't seem like it's been in here forever. Okay, so uh, takes out. So I'll, I'll get the rest of them out and I'll get back to you when I'm ready to put in the new plugs. Right, so with those spark plugs out now, we basically do the normal spill. We just make sure that the gaps are open, that they haven't fallen, um, you know, in transit. So they are all fine. And then what I will normally do, I just take my trusty piece of rubber pipe, get the angle right, okay, get the, get the spark plug to, to basically um, thread, so that I know I'm not going to cross thread. Um, any of these spark plugs, okay? Just make hundred percent sure that we get everything threaded nicely, okay? No forcing or anything. If it doesn't feel right, then it's start over, okay? The the reason for the flexible pipe is, uh, you know, sometimes the spark plugs they don't just go in straight; they go at an angle. So you can actually use that pipe because it flexes and you can actually use the pipe just to line the threads up properly, okay? So once you've got all that, you know, then we'll just go ahead and we'll tighten up the spark plugs again like we did by taking it out. So what I normally do, I just turn it against and this lever is enough, okay? If you can see that, this lever is enough pressure. If you just tighten it nicely, you can feel the, you can feel the, the washer collapse. Okay, and that will keep your spark plug tight. The spark plug's not going to come up, but I'll tell you what, I am uh, one that don't like to leave things to chance. Okay, so rather do a double check. Okay, and that's what I also do sometimes on my own. Um, I will take a normal long extension, okay, with a socket and a ratchet, like so. Okay, and then I'll just check and make sure that those spark plugs are tight. Right. just to be 100% sure. So leaving nothing to chance, just making 100% sure. Once we've got all that done, we can now put the plug wires back, okay, one by one. Basically, you just have to push them on, okay? Um, because uh, a quite simple explanation I just want to show you. I'll take an old plug here, and I'll take a... Okay, if you look inside there, you will see there's a little round metal piece there. And that head of that plug must actually push into it. You can actually feel it clicking. You know, you can maybe hear it click as well. Okay, and then you know. And when you give a light tug on it, it won't come off. But if you don't push it in hard enough, you give a light tug, it's just going to pull off. Okay, so we put our wires back, best that we can. Okay, just make sure that they click, that they clip in properly. Okay, and when you do give a, put, give a light tug on these uh, plug wires, you'll normally find that they, you know, they, they, they are stuck on there. Because you don't want it not to stick, because with this car driving, this vibration going, um, it could pull, pull, could pull the, the, the wire off and cause a misfire. Right, so now we'll do what we can simply do is we can just uh, give this flange another wipe here. You know, once the oil is now, 
just flowed nicely, um, you're not all dripped away. Make sure your flange is nice and clean and we put on the new filter. Okay, ensuring that we now have uh, a thin form of oil on our new filter. We can just go ahead and spin the filter on, okay, quite easily and just tighten it by hand. Here we have quite a nice grip on this filter. Okay, we'll just give it a, a nice tighten. You don't need to use any scanners there. All right, um, you know, just a tip as well. When you're servicing your own car, you know, try and keep a record of the parts that you use. Like on the box, you know, on the boxes of your of your uh, new parts that you get, you normally have a part number, you know. You'll have a part number over there, um, you know, which you can basically record, write it down in a in a in a book, you know, or tear the tear this off and just chuck it into a um, into a little uh, you know plastic baggie, so that next time when you service your car, you've got all the part numbers. You don't have to struggle and the guys sending you the wrong parts or you getting the wrong parts, you know. So that's always a good idea. So uh, let's go to the bottom again and uh, get that uh, sump plug put on. Okay, so we've got the sump plug back with some nice uh, thread tape, a new a new washer. There. Okay, and we'll just tighten it up. Size 14 spanner, quite easily. Turn it in all the way. Okay, just make sure that we not cross threading. Okay, um, that is normally when you turn it in by hand first. Okay. Right, wipe off our spools because we're gonna have to come back here and check for leaks. Okay, that's the new petrol water. So I'm gonna show you how we do this. Basically, you just pull the filter out of that little clamp over there. You know, you squeeze these clamps with your fingers. If you can't, use a pliers. Okay, this is the in inlet pipe, and that's the outlet pipe going to the pump. Okay, so remember that um, because there are arrows when you look very carefully um, on, you know, you'll get an arrow which means that that's the in and that's the out. Alright, so just give the pipes a quick twist just to get them loosened up like that. Okay, quick twist, pull the pipe out, get the new one and then just make sure that you get the, the proper, so that's in, okay, that's the in pipe, and that's the out pipe, okay. We'll just get those clamps put into place again, to make sure that we don't get any leaks here. All right, quite simply, like that, very easy to get to, very easy to do. And then of course we'll push the clamp, uh, we'll push the filter back in, make sure the pipes don't kink okay and make sure you get that flow right all right so that's your old filter didn't look too bad but we're replacing it anyway and that's how simple it is to do um, the petrol filter so as i said we're using the helix hx3 we just get rid of that security seal as i always mention make sure that security seal is still in place because if it's not there when you open up this top then it means that you know, they could have thrown any oil in here, you know, and claim it to be what you see on the label. So I'm going to start off with about three liters, okay? Um, because uh, this is not a high capacity engine, uh, oil. Um, so we'll go with about three liters. We'll start off there and do our uh, dipstick checks once the three liters has been put in. So I'll pour in the three liters here. Remember this car is jacked up slightly and the oil filter still needs to be filled. So if you look, it is actually showing on the full mark, alright? And uh, what we're going to need to do now is get the cap on, get the car started, make sure the oil light goes off and then we'll come back, uh, get it, uh, we will check for leaks first and then we'll come back, lower it down, level it out and then do the final check. Okay, so let's go start the score. 
Okay, so we want to make sure about our sump. Make sure that our sump's not leaking. And take a look at our oil filter. There's no drips. Okay. No drips, no leaks. So I'm happy. Okay. That we're sealing up nicely at the bottom over here. Now I'll get the squad jack down. Level out. And then check the, 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 the oil again. I do notice a little bit of smoke here. Okay. Uh, which will tell me that, uh, you know, we might have uh, worn oil rings or valves themselves. Let's just monitor that. I'm going to give it a light a couple of revs. You can see that uh, smoke coming out there when you rev it up a bit. Okay, which definitely signifies valve stem seals or even rings. Okay, I know that in my experience with these Toyota Tazers, they have very soft boards and their rings tend to wear very quickly because this car has only got a hundred and... let's take a look again it's got a hundred and sixty-five thousand kilometers um, you know on this clock hundred and sixty-five thousand you know cars nowadays the, but the new cars of today well, they go well over two three hundred thousand before they actually need any uh, work on the engine All right. so let's get this car jacked down and we will that let's see where our level is and you can see how nice and clean the oil is as opposed to when we when we before we drained it this morning okay it seems to be on the maximum mark that's the full mark over there so let's just go again make 100% sure it will come back we'll see we're just about 200 more short okay so I'll put in another 200 more taken out again and now we can check you can see it's on the full mark okay I'm happy and the oil is nice and clean compared to this morning that's the difference that flush makes all right so now all this is left for us to do top of our air filter back okay so it's just a matter of taking your time and getting it to bed and seat properly okay and then we can put our three clamps or clamps on over there like that and we can put our wing nut back, you know, and then also tighten the size. 12 there, make sure that your heat transfer pipe is in the proper position. But other than that, that is basically your service on the Toyota pads with the 2E 1300 engine. Okay, lovely car, nice and easy to work on. Simple, I think this is probably the cheapest service that you'll get besides the City Golf or the carburetor. You know, those are the, these are two cheap cars that we can uh, service ourselves and it doesn't cost them any money. Alright. Alright, thank you once again for popping in and joining me in my workshop. That was the Toyota Taz, which we just did a basic service on. Okay, thank you one and all again for your subscription. Thank you for your interaction. Okay, uh, don't forget uh, to subscribe. If you have not subscribed yet, you will get value because it's a free. It's free. And then, of course, don't forget, uh, okay, to, uh, you know, press the bell icon over there. That will notify you of uh, all the new videos um, that comes out. As I say, I'm doing it one to one a week we're still in level two lockdown in south africa it is now the 27th of august so stay safe out there drive carefully and i'll see you with the next video cheers